All right, so welcome to the next video. We're gonna talk about separation of variables. So we wanna solve differential equations um, using this idea of separating uh, the variables and then doing the integral of them. Okay, let's take a look at some of them because I think it's a little easier just to see it in process. So here we go. We have dy dx, which remember is a fancy way of saying um, the derivative. So the derivative is 2x over y, so it involves two different variables here. And we know that when we plug in 1 for x, we get out 4 for y, so that's that guy. Um, we want the particular solution to that, so we want it in terms of y equals my function. And then we'll do the asterisk second. So, okay, if we want to solve these, uh, we need to be able to work ourselves backwards and obviously do the antiderivative so that we can just get back to the original. The tricky part is we have two different variables, so we separate them. So, like, I'm going to move the y's to this side, and I'm going to move anything involving x to that side. So, if you'll notice, I can just multiply both sides by y, and then I'll multiply both sides by the dx. Now, I can integrate. And it is important because this side now says I'm going to integrate y with respect to y. So you guys can do this. We take it up by a power and divide by the power. Over here, we're going to take it up by the power and divide by the power. But that just leaves me with x squared. But remember, we have this possible constant because these are indefinite integrals. So we have to consider that. Okay. Well, that's why they gave us this original value. So if we plug in 1 for x and 4 for the y, so now we know the output, we end up with 4 squared 16 over 2, which is 8, 1 plus c, so we get c is 7. So we can go back to this equation, y squared over 2, and make it x squared plus 7, and then remember they wanted us to solve for y, so I'll need to start doing that so I can multiply everybody by 2, so I get 2x squared plus 14. And then to finish this, I would take the square root. Now, here's the thing. Technically, you get plus or minus this, but only one of these is going to give you the correct answer. So we got to ask ourselves before we finish this question. This is not my final answer. If I plug in a 1 here, will I get out 4 if it's positive or 4 if it's negative? Well, let's see. If I plug in a 1, I get 1 squared, which is 1 times 2, which is 2, plus 14 is root 16, and the square root of 16 is positive 4. So I want it to stay positive. So for this one, I'm going to have y equals positive root 2x squared plus 4. This will give me a positive 4 out. So this asterisk here says how would it change if you want it to be 1 but negative 4. Well, if I want to get out of negative 4 when I plug in a 1 to my final answer, I think you guys can see this. If I plug in a 1 here, then I would need the negative version so that it comes out to a negative square root. So it would be negative root 2x squared plus 14 for my y value. Might want to go through that one more time. Okay, my second example, same thing, just a little bit busier process. They give me a y val, uh, they give me a point, and they give me, they want the solution. So, okay, let's separate our variables. We have e to the y dy, we're going to multiply by dx. Then we're ready to integrate. So the integral of e to the y, as you guys know, is just e to the y. Over here, I'm going to go up by a power and divide by 2, so that just gives me x squared, but remember, plus c. Okay, we need to now figure out what our c value is. So we're going to plug in our point. So we have 2 for my y value and 1 for my x value. So I get e squared, I'll bring this one over, equals c. Okay, so now we have e to the y equals x squared plus c e squared minus 1. But remember, we're not done. We had to solve for y. So how would I undo e to the power of y? I would take the natural log of both sides. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm taking the natural log of this guy, and then I'm taking the natural log of all of this guy. Okay, but when I use a natural log to undo, I have to make sure that what's inside would come out to a positive, otherwise it can't work. So over here, the ln and the e do cancel to just y. Over here, I should introduce an absolute value just to ensure that there are no values that create a problem.
All right, and then this is, I believe, yep, this is our last example today. So in this example, same thing, we have an initial value, we have a, a derivative already given, and we want to go back to the original function. So first thing I'm going to do, separate my variables. So I am going to divide by this y, so that would actually be 1 over y. I'll leave the 1 half over here like that. Okay, so again, I divided by the y, so that's how I got the 1 over y, and then I left everybody else over here. So now let's do the integral. So the integral of 1 over something is ln of that something, but it is absolute value, so I'm going to introduce that. And then over here, the integral of, I can bring the 1 half out, the integral of cos is sine of x, but don't forget, plus c. Okay, so this is why I have my initial value. So let's plug in our initial value. We have 2 for y, and we have 0 for x. Sine of 0 is 0, so you have c equals ln of, and now you can drop the absolute value because you know 2 is a positive number. Some of you guys still write that with an absolute value. Once you know it's just a constant, you're good. Okay, so then I've got ln of y equals 1 half sine of x plus ln 2. Okay, we're almost there. We need to undo our natural log, and we the inverse function of a natural log is e. So I'm basically doing e to the on both sides. So over here on the left, those cancel out, and I just get y. Over here, I have e to the 1 half sine x plus ln 2. Now there is something very special that happens here, and the AP exam loves to do this, and that is remember, if you in an exponent, if you have addition, you can separate that using multiplication, like so. Remember, multiplying like bases, you would add their exponents. So I'm separating it back down, and you should see why that was a nice thing. When I separate, um, when I separate it, this part is e to the ln of 2. e to the ln cancels, leaving me just with a 2 here which then I can write 2 e to the 1 half sine x, which is obviously a much more concise version of that function. So again, in general, guys, these type of questions will give you a differential equation. That's what this is called, so it's already the derivative. So they'll give you a derivative written as dy dx. You probably have both variables involved. They're going to ask you to give the particular solution as a y equals, which means you just have to finish and go back. And to go back, you're going to have to do the antiderivative. But because you have two different variables, it's a little more complicated, and you have to solve for the c, and so on and so forth. So that's the main idea for these. Some are very straightforward. Some just take a little bit of work. And some have some interesting ways to simplify. So good luck.